through the Pentagon would have gotten them into Eastern Europe to talk about American law uh, as opposed to uh, Soviet law, which is based on bribes. Uh, yeah, and, that's right. uh, and at some point uh, after the events, uh, where they had uh, refreshments, he drank something and went into a wall. Right, so some kind of nerve gas or nerve gas or something. Uh, but uh, my mom and, and father leaving Chapel Hill, North Carolina, just to, to continue education. My dad is a dentist, my mom is an English major. Uh, and I think, interesting, uh, uh, just crossing that border between uh, Tennessee and, uh, and uh, North Carolina, I stopped at a rest stop and thinking, could I possibly find that place where I tried to find Smokey the Bear? <laughs> and I did, this is right in the morning. I noticed, you know, from the rest stop, just a little, little down, there's some little steps kind of off to the side. And I went down there thinking, you know, from that memory from two years old, is that going to be the same image which was, you know, ingrained in my memory for all these years? And yes, it was right there. It was the same. I didn't see Smokey this time. I saw some yellow birds. But this is right in the morning. It's a very mystical stuff. But interesting, talking to Mark about this, uh, we have some more interesting you know, ideas. I want to start specifically with this event because there's some specifics here. I've had 50 of these all over the country, but this is the second to last. Raleigh will be this Saturday. And thanks, Nisha and Mark, for organizing uh, these last uh, uh, coming home, right? Coming really uh, to, to this home. I have several homes. But uh, thinking just all these memories, where do we go after looking for Smokey the Bear? I don't remember Chapel Hill, you know, that night. I was probably asleep, I imagine. But coming here to the Unity, Unity Center, you, you called it. Unity Center of Peace. Center of Peace. Uh, some, some, you know, this, what is it, the Homestead Drive? Yeah. That seems very familiar. I don't remember exactly where that trailer park was that I spent my first year in Chapel Hill. But when I crossed it, when I went and saw the train tracks right here, and coming into the, the dirt roads, I think I, was, I actually grew up somewhere around here. I don't know exactly where, uh, but it was right next to the train tracks. I'm sure it was probably very close in a very similar area. So really, I was bred and spread in Chapel Hill. Right? Uh, you think that, uh, who is that guy? Lord, I seen fire and I see you. Uh, who is it? James Taylor. James Taylor is from Chapel Hill. This is my you know, trampling grounds from many years ago. So it's, it's nice to, to come back. Last year, I was without my voice. That was tough. Uh, this time, I have a sound system and a, a fantastic sound woman, uh, Leah, yes? Leah has done that. fantastic. And just the space. I mean, can you hear, can you smell the, the uh, can't you just smell the sunshine, the aromatherapy, right? <laughs> Ain't it just like a friend of mine to, to come up from behind? So it's a good feeling. And thanks, everybody, for coming out. I can tell there's lots of kindred souls and especially Mark, who, who's, still, who's from, uh, also bred and spread. Uh, uh, and Misha, for again, we, we've had uh, uh, some contact with the Ukrainian community here in, in Raleigh. They're in Raleigh. Uh, are there any Ukrainians here tonight? Of course, I can see several. <laughs> okay, okay, fantastic. Who does, Chiktos nerozumi anliski mova, pidna majruchka. Oh, okay. One person does not understand Ukrainian, so. Uh, I'll speak some Ukrainian once in a while. Sometimes it just comes out. Uh, so I'm going to talk a lot because this is what the Kobzars do. Uh, we call it sermonizing. <laughs> if you didn't get enough of that on Sunday, uh, that's, that's what happens here. Uh, but uh, I'm not a priest. I'm trying to be a Kobzar, which is something similar but different. Uh, these were missionaries. Uh, if you can imagine, you know, the apostles going, you know, to the corners of the earth where Jesus sent them, uh, that must have been pretty scary, you know, uh, propagating or, or preaching this new religion. Uh, but uh, the Kobzars did it uh, too in eastern Ukraine under Moscovite occupation for 200, 233 years without their eyes. These were blind missionaries who play instruments. It's something very specific. Uh, I'm not blind, and I'm not a Kobzar. Uh, maybe someday, you know, I might become blind. Who knows? My eyesight is getting worse. Uh, maybe I'll be more authentic. Uh, but uh, my work is basically to revive this tradition 
And you might say, why? You know, just because you like, you know, Ukrainian harp guitars, isn't that a good enough reason to make these and, and play them? Uh, but it's not just about the instruments. Uh, in all my years of preparation and uh, eventually going to Ukraine and studying there and learning how to make, uh, because you can't buy these types of instruments, and I need good instruments. I'm used to playing very nice Steinways and Gibsons, uh, and for my collection, I need instruments not for the wall, but to really, really play. So it's been uh, really a life's work uh, to have not just these three instruments, but 12 years of just making when I didn't play. So now I'm playing where I have good instruments, uh, and I'm still working on it. But uh, interesting thing, once uh, the bomb started uh, last year, uh, interesting that all this work uh, is coming into realization, you might say. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this for six years, but really, uh, we hit the road immediately and really fled uh, because we are probably four hours by car to the Russian border. That's a little bit close. Uh, so we, you know, packed up the cars and left. Uh, but we were brought back to Kiev, uh, where we stayed for the first two months and defended Kiev with spiritual defense. Now, this is kind of a theme of what we're talking about, is how do you defend a country the right way, right? We don't like war, right? And especially us Ukrainians, we hate it. We are complete pacifists until Moscow comes to town because we've had Moscow for many years, and this we know very well. It's better you know, to die fighting them than to let them take uh, an inch of our country over. Uh, and uh, the way how we defend, uh, you can say yes through money, through, through, uh, through guns. Uh, these are neutral things, money and guns. Uh, they're not necessarily bad. They're not necessarily good, right? They don't have a soul, uh, but it's a question of who wields them and how they wield them that depends uh, on, uh, I would say, the correctness right, uh, of, of these things. Uh, and so we have a, a similar thing. Uh, we call it the Kobzar institution. Uh, the folks with the guns we call the Kozaks, Kozaki. These were freedom fighters. They weren't conscripted. They volunteered. Uh, and during the first, uh, you could see, uh, first many months, lots of volunteers, like my neighbor Victor, uh, they've been on the front. Uh, but the Kobzar institution is the same defense of Ukraine, but through spirit, through music, right? This is not entertainment, this is not show, uh, this is, uh, uh, and what is this technology? It's something very specific. I mean, I can tell you a lot of things, and that might be interesting, you might not. Some people get very bored, they say, just play the music. Uh, but uh, it's important to start out saying that what we're actually doing is we are uh, finding the spirit of the best of Ukrainians. We look for them in archives, in books, in, 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 in different places, sometimes in villages. Uh, and the poetry of the most serious Ukrainian defenders who wrote poetry about how to defend your country the right way, right? Uh, the truly patriotic way. Uh, you take those very old poems uh, or songs uh, and you take them on specific instruments uh, and you uh, sing them. <laughs> You sing the poetry, uh, thus the spirit comes out. Thus these dead poets resurrect. Right? We have this idea of Jesus resurrecting. That's what we do. Because when you write a certain poem uh, and your soul uh, is kind of preserved there, that's what happens. So what do we do with these dead poets, these spirits? Uh, we spread them around. And how do we do it? When do we do it? We do it especially now. These songs have the most, you know, uh, potential powerfulness uh, right now. Uh, and what am I doing here in America? Shouldn't I be in Ukraine doing this on the front? Well, for the past year, uh, except for the several months I've been here, last time I was, I think, two months uh, in June, and now specifically I'm here back in America uh, before the spring offensive. This is my spring offensive. <laughs> I'm on the, uh, I don't want to say attack, but the offense, right, I'm proactively spreading the spirit around America. Uh, you might say kind of like the apostles spread the spirit, right? And what happened with those spirits? Well, they created churches. They created centers uh, where Christianity then grew and grew and grew uh, to where today in Europe and in America and all over the world we have uh, uh, Christianity, the philosophy is known, uh, and the world changes. Uh, and this is the same idea with the Kobzar tradition. Uh, it's not just... Uh, you might say, you know, uh, you might say it's very politically charged, uh, religiously charged. It's the same idea of, of spreading spirit. 
Uh, and these are spiritual ideas, all the ideas. Defending your country, that's pretty spiritual. Running for your, from your country, that's not very spiritual. Of course, some people have to flee, especially women and children. Uh, uh, but uh, again, I'm going to try to not talk too much. I'm not going to make that promise because then I'd have to break it. And I don't like breaking promises, especially in church. <laughs> so this is the kobza, uh, and it's so nice to have a voice. Last time, I was like this. I lost my voice for a month because I really abused it I had four, four events after I lost the voice. So uh, this is called the kobza, and the kobzars played the kobza, or the bandura, actually. Uh, and it's a, a lute, right, a folk lute. It's made out of one monoxyl piece. There's one piece of uh, silver maple, curly, very nice. Uh, and uh, the most similar instrument, you might say a lute, you might say an oud. Does anybody know the oud, the Arabic or Turkish oud? Because Ukraine is right next to the Ottoman Empire, you know, at one time. And a lot of the music might sang, sound very Arabic or Turkish. Uh, this is not a coincidence. Uh, this, is, uh, this is called neighboring cultures. But on the Ukrainian instruments, and especially on, uh, just like on the kobza, we have some harp-like strings. Uh, the ouds don't have those. Uh, but uh, open strings, you know, in addition to the, to the fretless, fretless uh, uh, neck. So the first song I play is, uh, again, this isn't just any music. This is specifically uh, songs which will hopefully uh, help the world understand it's time to get rid of Putin. Of course, you know, uh, I don't have to convince you, that's why you're here, certainly, to support Ukraine, uh, to understand maybe more about uh, who Ukrainians are through music. A CNN or Fox News or whatever you watch, uh, that's your problem. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. Uh, but uh, the spiritual culture of Ukraine through music, that's my problem. <laughs> And how do I present it? So I start with the first national anthem of Ukraine, which almost no Ukrainians know. Uh, also, it's important to say that these instruments I play, most, not just Americans, but most Ukrainians don't know these either. We weren't allowed to know these instruments. Uh, we weren't allowed to know these very uh, interesting uh, spiritual uh, hymns. Uh, so uh, this uh, hymn uh, was written 8,000 years ago by a Jewish man. <laughs> we have some ideas of Ukrainians being fascists or, or anti-Semites. Uh, it's not true. Some people have some jokes. Everybody has some jokes, right? But uh, honestly, the first Ukrainian national hymn. Uh, the music was composed in Kiev, certainly, uh, probably in the, in the catacombs, in the uh, Orthodox spiritual center of Rus. When I say Rus, I'm not talking about Russia. Russia is, is, is what we call, uh, the term Russia is really a fake Right, uh, as they were called up until 1700, Moscovia Tataria, or you could say maybe just Muscovy, right? Musk uh, that's who we're talking about when we talk about Russia. When we talk about Rus, we're talking about Ukraine, Kiev Rus, right? Uh, uh, today, the capital of Ukraine is Kiev because it's our capital, just like it was a thousand years ago uh, or even more. Uh, so, uh, monks writing compositions, we call these irmoses. Uh, this isn't folklore, this first song. Uh, but who is this Jewish man who wrote this Ukrainian? Uh, anybody here of the prophet Isaiah? Right? Uh, uh, and what is he writing when he prophesies about the birth of Christ? Uh, he says, God is with us in the flesh. Uh, and uh, he speaks your language, all languages. Listen to him, do what he says, because God is now with us. Now, when the Cossacks sing Tsunami Bok, and I'm not singing in Russian, I'm singing in Church Slavonic, uh, the language of the monks. Uh, uh, I'm talking about not the birth of Christ. I'm talking about the idea that we are asking God, be with us, right? Uh, be with us when we defend our country. Uh, help us to where we don't have sins on our souls and on our national soul. Uh, help us defend our country the right way out of love for our neighbors, uh, for, for our children, for our wives, for our country. Uh, help us do what we need to do, even if we have to kill. Uh, help us to where this will not, uh, you know, be to our detriment, personal or national. Uh, and all these ideas, uh, you can imagine, uh, even today, this is how we Ukrainians defend our country. We've had lots of opportunities. We could have taken Poland. We could have taken Moscow. Sahai Dachnik, Melnitsky. 
Uh, but we didn't. Why didn't we? We had these big victories in the you know, 1700s because we're Ukrainians. We don't need more territory. <laughs> we have enough. We just want to have peace. You know, we have fantastic land. You know, the tomatoes grow well. So, Snami <laughs> uh, Even the carrots. Where's the carrot? Oh, we have a very nice sign today, right? We have a, a, a trident. Uh, the, the Ukrainian national, uh, not vegetable, but seal is actually uh, the trident. So we had a very nice, uh, good sign, good sign. Uh, so, Ukrainian middle-aged singing. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Very serious music, uh, music of defense. And you might say, uh, this music sounds very, maybe too serious. Uh, and, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but when things happen like they've been happening this last year, uh, this is some pretty serious stuff. You know, imagine if somebody invaded America and you had to think, wow, maybe we'll lose our country for who knows how long. Right? That's, that was what was going through our minds. I evacuated, evacuated my family a week before. I got a sign from God. God said, get them out now. <laughs> uh, and how did that happen? It's an interesting story. That uh, uh, We weren't going to evacuate. We thought, you know, we, we've been waiting for Putin for 10 years. 
right? That's how long the, the war starting in Crimea, you know, has been going on. And he's always been kind of bluffing he's going to take over. Uh, but this time I knew it was the real deal uh, when uh, uh, an American base was built for refugees from America, American citizens in Rzeszow, Poland. Right? This is very strange, right, for Americans, refugees, you know, uh, and even Biden, you know, saying that he would help poor Americans uh, with the airline tickets to get out now. <laughs> That's pretty serious. Uh, and uh, it wasn't so cheap, they said, you know, to, to buy from some other, you know, airline than what, what, they would, what they would buy. But it was a nice idea. Uh, and so when I was on the phone with the embassy and I asked them, you know, can I get my children out without American passports? Because my, you know, they are, they have dual citizenship. It's not legal, but, you know, the passport is a very good travel document in times of these, like, such as this. Uh, so the embassy said something I didn't really like to hear. They said no. So I said, okay, well, how do I get my passports renewed? Because they had actually expired, you know, a month before. And they said, no problem, you know, come to, into the embassy. We'll be open another two hours before we close and move to Lviv in Western Ukraine. And I said, but I live exactly two hours from Kiev. All right, so that's what I called God's sign. When God told me, listen, you know, I'm going to save <laughs> you and your family. And uh, uh, so I, I told the children, no breakfast today, get in the car. Once we got the passport and blessed the souls of the, the folks in the embassy, when they saw four, you know, American children, American Ukrainian, without passports, uh, they postponed their, you know, evac they were evacuating too. They were ready to go. They were very much afraid that that would be the first place to be bombed. Uh, it's interesting. They didn't bomb the, the embassy yet. Maybe they tried. We don't know exactly what they're targeting because we now have defense, thanks to uh, Poroshenko. This is not a political, you know, uh, thing. But the first PVO system was created uh, during these 10 years because he knew it was going to happen. Uh, but uh, uh, the reason God wanted to get my family out, and, and right after we went to the airport, got tickets, took us three days to get out, for them to get out. Uh, they were jacking up the prices from $4,000 to $8,000, and then at one point said the, the airport is probably not going to be open tomorrow. But uh, once I got them out, I realized the reason is because if my family was with me, I wouldn't be able to do what I do uh, this year of war in Ukraine. And what am I doing? Uh, we're going to the hot spots. Do you see these under my eyes, right? Uh, before people couldn't tell I had 48 years old, that I had 40 years. Uh, but now after going to the front many times, uh, even my heart has started to, uh, to hurt. <laughs> I checked my blood pressure last night with my mom. It's high, I never had high blood pressure. Uh, so, uh, but it's okay, it could be worse, right? There's people without life and limbs. It's not so bad, it's a small price to pay. And I love doing it, uh, just like today, what you'll hear is the same thing that uh, for about 350 events this entire year we've had. Uh, three tours to the front. After I was in Chapel Hill last time, we had two tours uh, to the Donbass region in, in winter, uh, in fall to the Kharkiv region, but really the entire front. We always go, we draw a line of defense uh, starting from Kharkiv down to Kherson, uh, uh, but also a festival. We had a festival this year, and we will have a festival this year. So when I, once I get back on the plane uh, in a week, I'm going to uh, start preparations. I couldn't do it on the road. I'm just too busy. Imagine daily concerts. To have 350 a year, that's pretty much daily. Uh, sometimes we had as much as, as, as five concerts uh, with, with my students, of course. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, movement. So this is called a bandura. And again, I said that the Qobzars, who were they? Uh, these were uh, blind spiritual singers who, who went from city to city, town to town, specifically had a Qobzar route, right? Uh, where during the warm months they would go, and Chapel Hill is on the route. That's why I've been here, I think, four times over the past six years. And I come back and back and back, uh, as, as long as people invite me back. <laughs> so, where's Mark? Oh, here. <laughs> uh, the first time with John Westmoreland. Anybody remember John? Who knows John Westmoreland? Uh, he's in Finland now. Oh, Dad, oh, I didn't recognize you. Do you see my, my eyesight is getting worse? Uh, do I know the priest? Uh, I don't know you, but you know him. Okay, very pleased. I'm Yurko. <laughs> Uh, so, Eric Brewer, my, my dad. Did, were we, was I, was, did we live somewhere near here, Dad? Where was our trailer park? Yeah, we're out on Airport Road. Uh, Is that very close to where we are? Getting close to, uh, getting close to Hillsboro. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think that's 
I had a mystical feeling that maybe I was, we lived somewhere out there somewhere. <laughs> so thanks. I didn't know my dad was coming. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is, you know, a very important, when did the Kobzars exist? 1700 uh, is the date we found that they started to, you know, practice this new tradition at that point. Uh, and what happened in 1700? This was when Eastern Ukraine, uh, we had a country which we called Hetmanshina, uh, the Kozak uh, state. We had physical border and a very serious border. And we knew how to defend that border. Uh, but what was so important about this Kozak state is that this was the first democratic uh, country of Europe, right? You might say, wait a second, we thought Germany was the first, or maybe England, right? They had their constitution, the Magna Carta, you know. Well, before all that, we had uh, the Kozak state in eastern Ukraine. These instruments you see, these are eastern Ukrainian instruments, right, uh, uh, of that uh, Kozak state. Maybe, you know, a little bit different versions. But uh, during those days, we had a democratically elected uh, commander-in-chief and president. We call him the Hetman. Uh, and uh, it's 1709, uh, that's the date when Peter the Not-So-Great, to put it diplomatically, <laughs> Uh, took over, uh, and uh, Cossacks had to become slaves uh, or flee, like my family did. But in 1700, as the Cossacks were eliminated, uh, the Kobzars came into uh, activity. Uh, and for 250 years, 233 years, they existed, spreading the word, as you see me doing. Uh, but in 33, they were killed. Uh, all of them were killed, uh, exterminated uh, for their work, which they do. Uh, and, of course, we revive the tradition, uh, seeking the positive benefits, asking why did they kill these Kobzars? They must have done something right. <laughs> and what they were doing, they were keeping Ukraine free and keeping it Ukrainian and keeping it spiritually healthy for those 233 years. Uh, so this is a song from the traditional Kobzar repertoire. Uh, it's a general folk song. Uh, uh, but what am I singing? Uh, this is, again, a song of defense. This is a general uh, folk song about a brother and a sister. Uh, and the brother and the sister are maybe from eastern Ukraine. Uh, you can tell by their... Ac their, their uh, w when the brother says, says drastvui, that that's kind of privit or, or hello. Uh, so uh, the brother has gone off uh, for many years, maybe before the genocide. Maybe he went to uh, Poland to, to get, get a job and, and have a... a a life and not risk his snack or the Muscovites. So he comes back home and sees his sister, and the first thing he says is, hello, zdrastvui. Uh, but the sister uh, has a very uh, hurtful response. She doesn't respond at all. She ignores her brother after all these years. And the brother, of course, doesn't like that, so he asks her, have you become so proud to ignore your own brother? Uh, and her re reaction, her response, is very uh, specific philosophy. She says, I haven't become proud. Quite the opposite. I've become humbled by the Muscovite occupation. Uh, I didn't recognize you, brother, through my tears. So she's crying. She's changed. Uh, and, of course, he got out, but he's coming back. And he says, well, what has changed? He says, well, now I'm not just working for the man. I'm working for the Russian man. And that's on a different level. Also, uh, there's no uh, wood for the, for the oven, it's, it's cold. The children say, Mommy, give me some food, and there's no food. So in 1933, not just the Kobzars were destroyed, uh, all, uh, a lot of uh, people who were Soviet citizens, right? You might say, who was worth, Stalin or Hitler? Uh, I don't like to compare, you know, the Antichrists. Uh, and we talk about Putin, we're talking about, you know, uh, the necroman, as, as, as Tolkien calls him, as I call him, uh, the Antichrist. Uh, but uh, Stalin killed his own citizens, who were probably perfectly happy being, you know, Soviet citizens, you know, and maybe, you know, faithful communists. Maybe they had no problem with collectivization. Uh, but there was enough Ukrainians who said, we're not going to work on this collective baloney. Uh, we're used to doing things our way, not the Muscovite way. Uh, and if we're going to com create a commune, it's going to be a Ukrainian Cossack commune, <laughs> not the Muscovite type, because we know where, that, where that's going. So, uh, they killed pretty much everybody, five million at least. Uh, so this is a song from the traditional Kobzar uh, tradition. 
uh, and the last person who actually knew this repertoire, because they killed them all. This is Heyori Tkachenko. He escaped before the genocide to, uh, to a Moscow, where he got a job. Right? He went right to the center of the empire, but he lived. Uh, they weren't starving there. They had caviar and champagne. They were living it up during the 30s. But uh, when, once he came back to Ukraine, you notice nobody plays the traditional instruments. Nobody plays traditional songs. It had been completely decimated. Uh, so he began taking students. Uh, and uh, my teacher in Ukraine, Taras Komponichenko, is his student. Uh, so that's where I'm kind of getting this stuff. Uh, so uh, uh, as I walk through the valley, through the fields, will or will not I meet a long-lost relative? Why is this important today? Why, is this, why, why do I call this a song of defense? Because this is crucial to uh, ending the war. Uh, you could say we got to kill the Russians, get rid of them. Then, you know, the world will be cleansed of, you know, such foul... Uh, folk. But uh, as Christians, we have a different philosophy. It's called working on yourself, looking in the mirror, as Michael Jackson would say, uh, and uh, learning to uh, recognize your brethren, whether they're from eastern Ukraine or central Ukraine, uh, whether they're from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, right? Uh, even maybe there's some brethren in Russia, right? Maybe we should not become the racist and the fascist which Putin would like us to become. Maybe it's time to recognize that uh, even in Russia there's a lot of good people. It's important to work with those folks and through them take out Putin, uh, either put him in jail or, or other you know, uh, means. Uh, there's, there's many variants. Uh, and uh, through love of your neighbor uh, to uh, get that award Jesus was talking about. Uh, you could say that, you know, hate versus hate is, is escalation, right? Uh, but when you love your enemy, that's de-escalation, right? Now, of course, the enemy might use that against you and say, ah, love, ah, the stupid foreigners, we will kill them all. Uh, but I, I don't think they can. Uh, love is a very specific type of defense, and I wish that each person, uh, each of my friends and folk in the trenches, with love for their enemy... If they have to shoot, shoot in the feet. <laughs> they don't need those. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. Uh, and you can't take you know, all prisoners, but uh, I think Jesus would even say it's okay to kill in certain circumstances uh, when, uh, if you do it out of love, uh, and they don't have to attack Ukraine. They can go home. Putin can, can call them back. Uh, but if they don't, then certainly a lot of people will die. That's how uh, defense works. Uh, but uh, we gave them fair warning. <laughs> so. Oh, 
Lots of new gadgets, you know, that I'm kind of working with, uh, but it's so nice to finally, you know, be heard. Uh, so it's a new thing for the Kobzar uh, Guild. And the newest uh, and the coolest is what we call K and K sound. Anybody hear of those? It's a pickup inside. I actually had to take off my uh, deck and put a very nice uh, a pickup in there. Uh, and I just recently uh, bought four more for two of my students and the bandura and the kobza, so we don't have to use this because this feeds back. Uh, but uh, a nice uh, Bluetooth link in the place of a, uh, having a cord, now I can really go anywhere. Uh, and movement is important too. Uh, so this is called a torban. It's a Ukrainian Baroque lute. Anybody here with the Baroque lute? Any early music fans? Okay, fantastic. Uh, I'm working on actually some, some, uh, some, some really authentic Baroque, right? Weiss, uh, Bach, uh, Dowland, uh, Timofey Bilohradsky, uh, the best uh, lute player in Eastern Europe at one point. What's going on here? Okay, something just twisted. One second. Uh, but uh, very, very difficult repertoire. I have a good instrument. Uh, I'm, I'm working on making it actually better. I actually recently bought some, uh, some uh, gut frets. I'm using nylons, which are uh, they say not ideal, so we'll see. Uh, hopefully they'll arrive before my plane takes off. Uh, but uh, an instrument, not a folk instrument. You can play folk music on it, 
but it was made for you know, works like Bach and Bill Hradsky, uh, polyphonic uh, 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 textures, uh, which is very difficult. Uh, and, uh, but when I start with the Torban, I like to start with uh, a very specific song of defense. Uh, anybody hear of Ivan Mazepa? Okay, fantastic. Oh, a lot of people, even not just the Ukrainians. Uh, interesting, I was just recently in a small city in Minnesota called Mazepa. Has anybody heard of Mazepa, Minnesota? This is, this is very interesting stuff. Uh, and we actually took a trip with, with some friends from the Ukrainian community in, in, in Minneapolis. Uh, and uh, it's true, you know, there's a city and uh, we asked some people native of, you know, during, I think it was Memorial Day specifically, uh, what a good time to be in, in Mazepa, and asking people there, do you know who Mazepa was? Do you know who your city was named after? And one guy said, I don't know, uh, but he was nice enough to give us some, some volunteer fire department t-shirts which said Mazepa. This is cool stuff. Uh, and the next lady said, yes, wasn't he some kind of a soldier? And we said, yes, uh, and not just a soldier. He was the commander-in-chief of the Cossack forces. Uh, so she didn't know this. I proposed making a little monument, maybe a big one at some point, of Mazepa himself. But the history of the city is that uh, English colonists from England who settled in America uh, were very inspired by Lord Byron's poem entitled Mazeppa. Uh, and what was this, what was this English uh, nobleman writing about? Who was this Mazeppa? Uh, well, this was uh, a democratically elected uh, official on the level of a king, uh, but he wasn't a king, right? He was, uh, he was a servant of the people, and uh, they were so inspired by his uh, work, his, his democracy, his, his, his uh, freedom fighting, they decided that he was, you know, uh, I mean, they could have entitled, you know, their cities, so many cities from England, like New York, you know, or New, I don't know, New South Hampshire or somewhere, but Mazeppa, right, that was for them uh, very inspirational and for us too. Uh, and a lot of people who don't know Mazeppa, here is his poetry. He was not just a democratically, democratically elected commander-in-chief. He was a Baroque poet and a Torban player. Uh, so to actually listen to his poetry, uh, we'd like to sing his songs uh, and even play on his instruments. So we propose a reconstruction of Mazeppa himself. <laughs> How would he have sounded today in Chapel Hill? Had he been able to you know, come over on the plane after you know, it was, uh, 700 years? Uh, so uh, who was Mazeppa? He was the last... A uh, very effective uh, Cossack leader who unfortunately lost the Battle of Poltava uh, between uh, Russia, uh, or as it was called at that point, Moscovia Tataria again. Uh, after they took over uh, eastern Ukraine, that's when they started calling themselves uh, the Russian Empire. And Ukrainians say, wait a second, you're not Rus, you're not Russia, you're Moscovia Tataria. Oh, yes, but we took you over, so now we inherit all your wonderful traditions and history. And we Ukrainians say, no, you don't, because to do that, you have to be uh, more Ukrainian-like and not so, uh, you know, uh, dictatorial, right, for instance, or, uh, you know, terrible, uh, not so great. So, <laughs> uh, so what does uh, Mazeppa sing, right? What would he sing today? That's the question. And me singing this song, it's not just, you know, a, a relic of the past. It's the most important information of the president for us Ukrainians along with Americans to get our act right. And when I'm singing about uh, us being divided into the left and the right, I'm not just talking about East and West Ukraine. I'm talking about the Democrats and the Republicans, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what party you are you're with, but if you start hating your neighbor because of the other party, that's what they call divide and conquer. And it's not an American ideal. It is a Putin ideal. So be very careful. <laughs> Don't let it happen. Uh, vote for the best candidate. And I'd like to thank both parties for helping Ukraine. And if, they, if, one of the, if any of the parties fail to do that, please uh, call your leaders and tell them that you will not support their party if they do such things. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, what does Mazepa sing about? Uh, what does he say that we have to you know, correct? He said, you know how it happened in, in 1709? We fought amongst ourselves. Uh, we kicked ourselves in the teeth. Uh, we didn't love one another. Instead, we fought against each other. 
Uh, uh, we had one president, we should have listened to him rather than, you know, uh, having these kind of scandals, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, he says there are three types of people who caused Ukraine to fall. The first type uh, is the person who does not believe in volunteerism. He sits not on the couch, but under the couch. Uh, he says, let the Cossacks do the fighting. We can't do anything, right? Uh, uh, but of course they're wrong, right? Uh, and not just Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian volunteerism, American volunteerism, right? The people who really want to help, right? People who still have the freedom gene inside of them <laughs> and hopefully will uh, uh, increase those, those, those feelings. Uh, the second type of person, the person who says, Ukraine, are you crazy? Fight for Ukraine? You could die. You can't make money in Ukraine now, so let's go to Europe and make some money, right? They leave Ukraine in the time of need. Uh, and the third type, uh, the worst type, uh, the ethnic Ukrainian who hates Ukrainians. He's happy uh, to take the little device and put it on his neighbor's home, which the Moscow bombs hone into uh, to blow up their targets. You've heard of those? Uh, for a fist full of rubles, they did it, right? Uh, the traitors, the diversanti, the saboteurs, uh, the folks who feed the Moscow snake, as Mazeppa puts it. Because of the, these three types of people, that's why we failed. Uh, and when your children ask you, where were you when Ukraine was in its biggest time of need? Uh, what were you doing? Did you do anything for Ukraine? Uh, did you sit and cry in front of the TV? Or did you get off the couch? Did you get off your, out of your comfort zone and do something? And I, I've met some fantastic folks from America, not even just Ukrainians like Emily Marie from Detroit. She made six concerts in the past, yes, in the past two years. Uh, Misha's good, he's up to two. Uh, also, uh, Mark. <laughs> uh, Mark's been to three. Have you, is it three or two? I don't know, <laughs> but who's counting? But uh, <laughs> uh, a lady from Ely, Minnesota. She came to the presentation with, with some yellow and blue flowers. She uh, had a, a Kozak style haircut, right? Uh, we have girls in the, in the ranks, women, right? Freedom fighting women. Uh, and I told her, come to Ukraine. We can go to the front together. We can find some volunteer work for you there. And she wants to come. Uh, she's been studying Ukrainian music on YouTube. She knows Taras Kompanyachenko. Uh, so some fantastic Americans who, and people who've, who fight and die, right? Uh, who have no ethnicity of Ukraine. But by spirit, they know Ukraine is their folks. So... Uh, Duma Mazepa, in the end he says, I can't do this all myself, I need help. Help me defend Ukraine. And he says, in the name of freedom, in the name of faith, that's what we're fighting for. We have a right to bear arms, uh, and uh, 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 please, if you only knew how much Ukraine has given Ukraine, and given Europe, and given America, right? The Americans I was talking from, the, uh, the English colonists, uh, they also were very inspired. Uh, so that inspiration is what we in America uh, really need now. Uh, so Duma Hetma Mazepa, the historic song, uh, so that we finally get our act right. <laughs> A ne vjedin huž si tjaknut, toj na pravo, toj na livo, a vse bratja toto divo. Toj na pravo, toj na livo, a vse bratja toto divo. Nemaš ljubi, nemaš sodi, odšov to i vzjav v živodi. Odu vsi propali, sami sebe zvojuvali. Ej, vratišča, poraznati, što ne vsim nam panovati. Ne vsim damo, vse je znati i rečami kerovati. Ako 
Corabel Polatimo, and the whole Lude Polichimo, but not steer an exam Keruye, Ves Corabel, Upra Vuye, Chunka Bid and Amat Kumaye, Yod Noi, Postu Kaye, Jal Sabosh Ukraini, Shonev Kupi, Mayesh Sini. Den Jeveis Pohane, Hilche Suda, Atamane, Idimatki Ratovati, Nedai Moi, Pohi Bati, Druhim Lachum Zahro Slujit, Pokraini Toi Tujit, Mati Moya, Starenkaya, Chom Tevelmi, Slabenkaya, Rosna Teber Roshar Pali, Grepusni Purtur Kamdali. Shop Slabila, Yashkinets, Silnev Mila. Treaty Moskvi, Yush Holduye, Yevirne, Yush Tuhuye, Toyna Matku, Narikaye, Inetolyu, Proklinaye, Lipshabulon Meroditi. Nish lift takik bidak shiti, ot six toron, vorohuyut, ok ne mechem, ruji nuyut, ot six ne mazit slevosti, ani slučnoj učti vosti, bužikami nazivajut, a podelanstvom dorikajut. Bratov ne učila, šom od sebe ih pustila. Lipše bolo probovati, v kupi leho odbuvati. Ja sam bini ne stolaju, hiba tilko sohodni zavolaju. Ej, panove generali, čemu že jeste tako spali? I ve panstvo polkovniki, bez ni žodni politiki. Ozmite se vsi za ruki, ne dopustit horkoj muki, mat si svoji bolj štrpiti, nute vrakov, nute piti. Ali nabivajte, ostri šabel dobuvajte, a za viru hoću mrite i volnoste boronite. Neka i vična bude slava, že pri šabli maje prava. Neka i vična bude slava, že pri šabli my Slavo Ukraine. And you might ask, this is lots of text. These are text-based songs. Maybe do like half the song or a little fragment. Do we really need to hear all the text? I don't know. But... Uh, you know, music is an international language. You don't have to know the text. And I told you what I'm singing about anyway, right? But the idea is emotions, right? Spirit. That's what comes out. And will it make a change in you? Will you go to your neighbor and maybe you being a little bit, maybe you'll have some interesting ideas to tell them. Will you spread the spirit? I don't know. But this is what I do, right? Uh, you don't have to go to every American. Just go to the serious ones who are serious enough to invite me. Uh, spread the word to the people who, not the ones that don't come out to the event, but the ones who come out to the event, right? Uh, and with that very serious group of people, if you weren't serious, you wouldn't be here, right? You'd be watching, you know, the serial sitcom, which everybody watches on Thursday night, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and with those people, the leaders of the community, you spread the spirit, right? It's, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit goes where it likes to go, right? Uh, and usually through people who spread that spirit. This is the same tradition, or this, this is the same technology, a, a different tradition, I guess. Uh, and uh, I don't know where all this is going, but I do know that all the countries I have done this tradition in the past six years are the countries that support Ukraine the most. Uh, except for England, I haven't been there, uh, and they're pretty supportive. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, uh, I don't know how effective my work is. Uh, I don't have to know. I do what I can do. I do as, as much as I can do it. You might say this is crazy to have so many events all the time. Uh, but uh, I never promised anybody I was sane. And I love my work so much that I want to do it more. Right? I mean, in two months to have 50 concerts, is that even possible? <laughs> yes, and I've been training for, for many years. At first, it was, I would take a week to have one city. Uh, and now one day, two days is too much. Uh, now, of course, my, my voice does struggle, but my fingers love it. <laughs> uh, so my voice is back, and I've had three days of rest, actually, driving from Texas. Uh, so uh, besides Mazeppa, who do we have? Uh, you're, you're from Bucha, right? But you've lived here since 2000, 2000 right? Yes. Uh, and uh, interesting, uh, talking to Pavlo, uh, he said that his parents uh, made it through occupation, right? Russian occupation. Uh, and uh, once Bucha was liberated after the second month, I think, uh, his parents went home. Uh, and I met a guy who also uh, got out when he realized that he might not live long as a civilian in Bucha, uh, and uh, he came back. And when we, when the uh, the block posts where they you know have checkpoints, when they opened up and let people uh, go to Bucha, this is the day after demining. Uh, we decided it's time for us to go, and we didn't expect to find a lot of refugees. Or these aren't refugees; these are people who stayed home, right? Uh, civilians still at home, uh, but we 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 found many. Uh, but uh, the idea is not just, there, there's se several different things we can do with, with the instruments. Uh, and uh, one of the things we had an interesting invitation from, from the guy from Bucha uh, was to actually have a Kobzar funeral. And I asked him, I mean, I th thought we were going to a parish of living souls, uh, but he invited us to the church where there was in back of the church the mass grave. Uh, and I asked him, was there a priest? Was there a funeral? No, of course not. You know, the, the block posts were just opened. Uh, and we only got in because we took about many hours going around village to village uh, to, because the road was, was, was bombed out, the, the main highway and the road to European. Uh, so we found out how to get in there, going through Bilhorodka and some other little cities. But uh, what would you sing at a mass grave, right? Could you sing? Uh, and looking at the photos in Facebook, of course, you break down and cry. There's no question about it. Uh, but when actually going there, uh, we had a different spirit. Uh, and I decided to play John Jowland, uh, a lullaby, right? He's singing to a, a girl who's crying. She's very sad, uh, maybe in, in Renaissance, uh, Shakespearean times. Uh, melancholy was very popular. Uh, but interesting, after seeing this song at the grave, I realized he's singing to a dead girl. He can't see her eyes because she's underground. Uh, in some mystical things, uh, singing, you know, as the sun comes out tomorrow, you know, the song... The sun did come out that time, so very uh, some uh, uh, confirmations that this is the song uh, to uh, sing uh, for the souls who were killed to rest in peace. We might have some saints in there, people who did not want to leave their homes. It's a spiritual conviction to stay at home uh, and defend their homes, maybe just by their spirit, by their 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 uh, specific presence at home uh, when the Muscovites came to clean up, right, to, to, to steal, the, the, to loot the places and, and kill. Uh, so uh, the idea is rest in peace, right, not uh, panic, right, that's what Putin wants, he wants panic, we won't give Putin what he wants. Uh, and w when we say in Ukrainian, uh, we're talking, we're, the translation is eternal memory, let's not forget what happened. And we say let's not forget that means let's not stop helping Ukraine. 20% of our country is under occupation, and you think the killings were just being done in Bucha, Izum, Kherson, right? The torture chambers, you've heard of those. They're still in existence all in all those places. This is a Putin order to rape and pillage and torture. So uh, there's a lot of people in that 20% of our country, and we need to help them. But let's talk about all of uh, the present empire, which, which, which we call Russian. Uh, a lot of those lands uh, are not Russian uh, and are also under occupation, like a certain part of Georgia, uh, the entire country of Belarusia. And what's happening to Putin, people who protest the Putin regime 
to those people, right? Uh, they're also being beaten and taken to jail. Their children are being taken from them and put up in orphanages. Uh, so uh, when we say don't forget, that means let's not stop uh, fighting for those people. Pamyat, rest in peace. Don't let it continue. So you might say, John Dallin, what does that have to do with anything? Uh, there were some proto Kobzars, right? People who uh, kind of were similar to the blind Kobzars, but different uh, lute players like the troubadours, maybe the Irish bards, uh, maybe anybody here of the Texan, Blind Willie Johnson. Oh, tell me who's out of riding. Oh, tell me who's at a riding. Oh, tell me who's at a riding. Oh, book of the seven seals. This is a blind Kobzar, a black man who was uh, as much a Kobzar as any of these whiteies. Have you ever heard the, the recordings? It's fantastic. I remember uh, wadding, uh, I'm sorry for racial slurs. I have, the, I have artistic license, right? Uh, because I know what, what it's to say, but really uh, trying to find out what voice should I sing these Kobzar songs. Really, Blind Willie Johnson was, was the key. Uh, this isn't just the blues, this is the preaching blues, right? And just being down at Texas, I couldn't help sing even some Elvis. Oh, well, that's all right. A, but really, Blind Willie Johnson, really also central. Because these are not just Ukrainian traditions. Uh, these are God's traditions. These are spiritual traditions, which God does not want uh, to lose. Uh, and uh, anybody, any Shostakovich fans, uh, Dmitry Shostakovich, 
uh, one, of the, one of the good, the very good Russians, one of my favorites, right? Along with Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky, of course, Tchaikovsky was Ukrainian, but he was kind of for the Tsar, so uh, we're working on Tchaikovsky. <laughs> <laughs> but his, his, his great-grandfather fought with Mazeppa, we understand, his opera Mazeppa, right? These are all some clues to what, where his real allegiance, allegiance uh, was. His sister in Kamenka in the Tchaikovsky region, uh, but uh, some other proto kobzars when I talk about King David, right? Uh, he was an instrument maker. He played on the Mesopotamian harps uh, and uh, wrote spiritual poetry, the Psalms. I'll, I'll sing a, a psalm dedicated to Putin a little bit later. Uh, the Kobzar tradition is for everybody. Uh, and as Shostakovich writes, uh, you can never really kill such traditions. They simmer like the hot coals and when the fire has died, waiting for a better time. And this is exactly, I don't know if he actually wrote that. I think he did. He had to be a very serious spiritual musician to write something like that, even about the Ukrainian Kobzars. He kind of compared himself to a, a Russian uh, type of uh, Yurodovny, I think he called them, uh, who would also criticize the government uh, and wasn't afraid to, to speak out. But uh, a lot of these songs that we have, we don't have them because the Russians printed them in, 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 uh, in books and in the songs. We have them because through uh, the folklore, uh, they weren't able to censor them. So this is another proto kobzar uh, we call uh, Heori Skovrada. Anybody here to see Heori Skovrada? Uh, in, uh, this past year was his 300th uh, anniversary from his birth date in the Poltava region in Chornuchi, not far from where we, we live in Krechkivka for 12 years. And uh, when I say a proto kobzar uh, he wasn't blind. Uh, he may have actually played the Torban when he was uh, working uh, in uh, Queen uh, Tsaritsa Elizabeth's uh, court along with Timofey Bolorodsky, the best lutenist in Eastern Europe. Uh, he would have gotten to know the Torban at that point. Interesting. Uh, now, he did play some Bandura Kobza, maybe Torban, we don't know. Uh, but how would Skovarda sound and what would he sing had he been able to wander as a wandering teacher and philosopher? Uh, we, we have his poetry, uh, his most famous called uh, The Divine Garden, uh, very similar to your Divine Garden. These, these uh, carnations sound, smell fantastic. Uh, and what would he sing? Uh, he would sing, Ravi Prava. I'm not singing Russian, I'm singing an old uh, Ukrainian literary language of uh, 17, uh, 20s, or 30s. And uh, what is he singing? He's singing uh, that uh, different cities, we have different traditions, different customs, different laws, uh, but the most important thing is it doesn't depend where you live uh, for you to uh, keep your uh, good conscience intact, uh, to not go crazy in any of these places because they, different cities, different traditions, influence you positively or negatively. Uh, and he's talking about the negative uh, things which happen in a country. And he talks about a lot of things like uh, uh, the people who uh, are constantly tilling the land, but not the private farmers, but the big oligarchs who are trying to find out how to you know, make the most money or, or something. It's a question of what is he talking about. Uh, or uh, people have these huge parties, and all they do is party, uh, and their house is like a, a beehive with bees, and you know, how, many hosts, how many guests could you possibly have? Not the idea of having quality guests, but having a quantity of guests, right? And I'm working on this with my Kobzar events. I don't need lots of people, I need the serious ones, right? Or other ideas of, of uh, the lawyers who twist the law uh, to you know, uh, benefit their profit, uh, and a lot of other ideas. But uh, the last of his uh, verse is about death, and the idea of death uh, is inescapable. You don't get out of this one alive. Uh, it doesn't m matter if you're a peasant or if you're the Tsar. Right, uh, death comes and, and everybody burns, like like the uh, like the uh, hay, not the hay, uh, the straw in the in the fire, uh, and uh, something else about the tsar. Uh, uh, and just the idea that death uh, death will come <laughs> to everyone. Uh, just make sure when you die, you die. Uh, with good conscience, uh, you, uh, one of his famous uh, quotes 
is the world tried to catch me, uh, but I escaped. <laughs> right? He, he, he led a very spiritual life. Uh, so, Vsyak Mohor do Naravi Prava, Heuriskovara, Ukrainian philosopher, very spiritual philosophy. Just some other incredible Ukrainians without their spirit, uh, we would have a lot less defense. Uh, the main poet, uh, anybody who has any ideas what I'm going to play next? Who is the main poet in Ukraine? Of course, all the Ukrainians know. Who? Any other ideas? Okay, I think it's unanimous. Shevchenko. Uh, this guy was a fantastic artist, one of the best. If you saw his, his paintings in, in Kiev, once you go outside, you say, what happened to Ukraine, right? He, he, the soul and the beauty of the country and in, in, in the faces, in the portraits and everything, in the landscapes, it's all there. But uh, once he was studying in, in Petersburg, right, he was actually bought out of slavery, uh, partly because his poetry was so incredible. And a lot of the supporters of his poetry's, poetry was uh, Russian intelligentsia who said, listen, this guy... He's, he's talking about freedom, about, you know, the end of the empire. We like these ideas. Of course, the Tsar didn't like those ideas and sent him into exile and forbade him, uh, forbade him to even have a pencil and paper. No drawing, uh, no sketches, no poetry. Uh, and, uh, but interesting uh, that he was also a musician. They say that he had three torbans. Uh, if he had three of these things, were you John Westmoreland's father? Okay, I'm sorry. 
I'm kind of thinking, is this, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you have three of these, you're either a collector or a Torban player. Now, we may have, somebody may have confused Vasil Shevchenko, who had a Kapalya, a chorus, with two Torbans and some other Banduras in, in 19, I think, 15, with Shevchenko. But we do know for a fact that Shevchenko did sing his poetry uh, and play the piano and the guitar. So how would that have sound, sounded uh, also today in, uh, in, uh, in Chapel Hill? Uh, and uh, one of the first songs I heard ever on the Bandura, I know these songs because I got the spirit. The seed was planted uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. I remember listening on Sandy Forks Road because uh, we had a, a phone attack, a collection of, of records uh, with the Ukrainian Bandura chorus. Uh, they cut their number, album number one. It was called Right After They Got Out of the Refugee Camps. Uh, and, and work labor camps in Germany, came to Toronto and, 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 and Detroit and recorded uh, this next song. Uh, this is Shevchenko. And, but the interesting thing uh, is a chorus. It, it's, it's incredible. You have you know, 50 people playing the bandura, the modern bandura. And, 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 you know, uh, but how would Shevchenko have sounded? How would he have sung? Right? How would his spirit come out? So this is my speculative reconstruction. Why speculative? You know, uh, had he you know, had a chance to learn to become a fantastic, well, no, uh, a decent turban player, how would that sound? Uh, so, and, and what would he sing? He would sing uh, the song we, from Taras uh, Vinich, Cervoni Banquet, Haidamaki, the revolutionaries in, uh, you know, 18, 18, when was Kolivshina? 1750, maybe? Who knows there? When Kolibula Kolivshina? 1715? 1760, around that time, a long time ago. An uprising of, of Haidamaks, of, 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 of peasants, amongst others, and the Cossacks. Uh, so uh, Shevchenko would sing uh, that the black clouds are rising, right? Uh, he's not talking about the weather, he's talking about the Muscovite hordes. One from the Crimean region, another from across the field, maybe Donbass, and he compares Ukraine to a child who's crying uh, and nowhere to turn to. Uh, the child goes to uh, Mommy America and says, help me. And America says, Ukraine, we don't know Ukraine, we know little Russia. Oh, you're part of Russia, you're some separatist. Well, go back to Russia. Uh, you have no lobby power in our parliament. Or uh, to Daddy Europe, help us out. Uh, uh, maybe even Poland, you know, you have some sentiments, maybe one time during the Haidamaki uh, rebellion, certainly. And what do they say? We're sorry, we can't help. Uh, but when I sing the song, I dedicate it. Uh, Shevchenko says the worst thing happened under that Russian occupation for all these centuries, uh, such is the fate of us. Uh, the Cossack children no longer are freedom fighters. Uh, they no longer fight with love. They are no longer baptized. Maybe he's singing about the, the Soviet years. I don't think just uh, the, the destruction of the Cossack uh, forces, that's what he's talking about. But of course, I sing the last verse in the past tense uh, because now the children of the Cossacks are in place, in positions. Uh, those are the people who are defending the free world today. Uh, and uh, I want to take this chance before I forget to thank each and every American and especially tax paying Americans that you uh, have helped so much. Uh, we had the things w which we needed, the spirit the love, uh, the bravery, uh, and you had the dollars which, with, with, with which we've bought, and we have bought the uh, ammunition, uh, the tanks. We're waiting on the planes, uh, the fall offensive. That's what we really need. Uh, and now is the most critical phase so that America does not turn off the TV about Ukraine. I just recently, uh, my mom was watching uh, one of the news stations. I won't say which. <laughs> I'm not happy with which one. What is, it's not. But... I'm very happy that they showed a drone while there was a Russian, a lone Russian soldier asking to surrender. And I was wondering, do you see, I was wondering, do you watch Fox News too? Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> it was on CNN, oh, okay. Or, it's not important, <laughs> okay. It was, uh, oh, it's good, all the stations, fantastic, and thanks to everybody. <laughs> it's like a minefield. <laughs> so. And I'm thinking, what are they going to do? Are they going to shoot the, the, the prisoner? They took him prisoner, and I'm happy to say, I'll tell you the truth, it doesn't always happen that way. I asked my friend, do you take prisoners? And my friend said, 
it's very difficult to take prisoners. Sometimes you have to shoot. Uh, but I'm glad that they do show positive propaganda uh, because honestly, we don't want to shoot. Uh, well, I can't speak for everybody, but just in general. Uh, I've been to the front uh, three tours. That's a lot, right? In, in the, the Kharkiv tour, it was only for military. We found a chaplain and he took us, you know, uh, almost to the front, you know, the, the buffer, the region between the ground zero to about 40 kilometers. That's pretty close. You hear bombs. But uh, uh, when people, you know, had time to listen to our music, they did. And these are the things I told them. So what you're hearing today, this is what I'm telling the troops. Fighting with love, this philosophy, this is what we do. I don't know what the generals tell the boys in the front, but I know what I tell them. <laughs> and I say some very scandalous things, which maybe somebody could point the gun at me, uh, but they don't. They say, thank you. We're also thinking about these ideas, you know, how to defend our country the right way, how to end this thing. So, uh, Shevchenko, uh, the last verse dedicated to the Cossack children who are in place. Uh, and then I will play a Cossack, uh, Cossack poetry of, of a, written by a Cossack, uh, Avram Rebyanka. Uh, he was in the Baroque uh, period. Uh, poetry on the, the seal, or the, uh, see, uh, the, the, the national emblem during the Cossack period, 1600 to 700, uh, the Cossack with a, a musket. Uh, and he compares very interesting, beautiful poetry. Uh, the Cossack. Uh, is like the good pastor who defends his flock from the evil uh, or the hungry, you might say, uh, wolf or wolves uh, with a rather large stick, <laughs> right? Uh, so, but first, Shevchenko. <laughs> Oh. 
energies because it's a lot you know it's a lot of you know uh, is anybody trying to find out you, you know uh, 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 to try to understand the language that's a lot you know if you understand Ukrainian it's, it's very difficult if you don't know the language uh, so it's a lot of work and what a great way to get to learn Ukrainian uh, but again uh, the emotions that are there um, that's that's the important thing and I told you what I'm seeing about uh, so I talked talked about uh, King David uh, but I have not given you an example of a Ukrainian psalm. Uh, you know that there's the book of psalms, right? Uh, these are songs. These are spiritual songs which David wrote. Uh, and this is uh, the genre which we call the kanti, uh, canticles, or the uh, psalms as well. Uh, but in Ukrainian language, uh, Ukrainian Christian philosophy, uh, sometimes the kants were uh, you know, about religious figures like Jesus or, or, or Mary, I made a mistake. Before I play in the bandura, there's a specific song I want to play. Kant do Bohorodice. So this is a song of defense, uh, uh, dedicated, and not just dedicated, we're actually talking to Mary, the mother of God, asking her to close our skies. We have this kind of a motto, asking NATO, close our skies, help us protect us from these bombs which are constantly raining, even today. Uh, well, I don't know today, uh, but in, the, in this month, uh, the whole year, right, uh, nobody's safe, but little by little, we do have these missile defense systems which are in place in most of the big cities, thankfully. Uh, but uh, still, uh, a place like Zaporizhia, Dnipro, uh, Kharkiv, Kherson, uh, Mikolaev, they're very close to the border. You don't have time uh, to even have air raid signals and go to the bomb shelters. And there's people living there. There's lots of people, like your mom. Uh, I didn't even know that your mom was actually in one of the, I think maybe she told me, but there was somebody else, somebody other's mother, a mother whose son was in Canada, uh, Alexander Keat, uh, but, but your mom was at Nipro at the library probably. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's fantastic. Imagine uh, me kind of being a bridge between, you know, the outside world and, and, and Ukraine uh, through a spiritual, making spiritual links. Uh, and one of the reasons I, I'm sure M Misha decided to really help out uh, was uh, uh, to make his mommy proud, right? <laughs> and so, and if she's watching, what is your mother's name? Natalia. Natalia. And your mom is, is, is fine too, I hope. But really, I mean, it's, it's terribly dead. I have a friend in Zaporizhia. He lives right next to a military base with his family of two boys. Uh, he makes drums and is creating a musical. Uh, but also, he, he's a Buddhist. Uh, he, 
believes that uh, all this will pass, but to evacuate for, for him, uh, he doesn't believe in that. There's something against his philosophy. And a lot of Ukrainians, a lot of people who have returned home, you might say, what is my family still doing there? You left your family in Ukraine, right? Last time, you know, I was very lucky to have a father who was happy to donate $8,000. That's a lot of money to, to fly out, and that's what it cost before they closed the airport. So thanks, Dad. Uh, I mean, he knows it. But uh, this last time I asked my wife, would you like to evacuate Ukraine? Uh, and she says no. Uh, now, I have a very serious wife. You know, my dad knows, uh, Misha knows, uh, Mark knows. Uh, and uh, we've lived through, you know, you know the, the power outages in the winter. Now, it, this is the time when the Ukrainian village becomes a paradise and uh, Putin can take a hike. We're not going to leave our country. Of course, I'm here because I'm on professional uh, duty, spreading the word. Uh, and I'll be back, and I'll see them hopefully next Thursday. Uh, we'll see. It's not so easy to, to get back home. Uh, but uh, this is a song, uh, one of the things we sing in the bomb shelters. Uh, and the idea is uh, even the Cossacks, the traditional Cossacks, would sing to um, uh, to uh, marry the mother of God uh, because she appeared many times in the, in the field of battle and that made them believers. Uh, we have a holiday, Pokrovsky holiday, when she closes our skies. She, uh, Pokrov is, is to literally to cover, <laughs> right? Uh, so we have ideas that, uh, that hopefully that's what you do in a bomb shelter. You pray uh, and it's a really good time to uh, start believing in God. It doesn't hurt and even going under the front, I've had invitations uh, uh, this past tour, the Christmas on the front, you can imagine. Uh, a lady from Pryatin said, go to the, almost to Donetsk City. This is like gra near ground zero. This is like 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers from Donetsk itself where there's an encampment. And you said, go find my husband. He was conscripted. He doesn't want to, uh, you know, he's a journalist. Uh, but, uh, you know, can you help him come home <laughs> alive? I say, I don't know. But can you imagine, you know, people who believe in my mission? And I believe in my mission. So with that invitation, I went directly to the front uh, with one of my students. I don't like going alone. It gets much more hard when you're alone, especially in the front. Uh, but, you know, it took a day to get down there, uh, you know, small village roads a little bit. And you go through some cities. And Elena said, don't stop in those cities because they're, they're bombing them constantly. Uh, so uh, we had time for a selfie, <laughs> right? But once we got down there, they said it was a bad day. They started, you know, raining down the grads. Uh, and that's, that's lots of missiles. That's not just, you know, one or two. Uh, so uh, I was tired. I wanted to sleep. I didn't even have, you know, moral strength to, to sing these songs. But I had a little nap. I got up and we did what we did. Fantastic talking with uh, soldiers right there on their day off. The next day they would go into the, grand posi in the, the positions. Uh, and... At first, I thought they didn't necessarily want to hear a concert. They just wanted to have some relief, right? Sit in bed with, with their iPhone and, and, and you know, write, write messages to their mother, I guess. But we had a fantastic uh, Kobzar event. Uh, and when you sing these prayers, uh, you uh, start to forget about, you know, the Russian soldiers and the bombs. Uh, but after the Kobzar event, uh, and what did we talk about? A specific lecture about how to pro prolong your life on the front. Things like praying, believing in God, God can do the things we can't do, right? And again, it doesn't hurt, uh, especially in that circumstance, to, to start praying. Uh, Vadim came home alive. Uh, he was actually wounded by a, a, a bomb blast where shrapnel hit his neck. Uh, but that's one way of God bringing the boys home, right, because of such injuries. But he wasn't killed, uh, but... Just imagine being one of uh, 30, right, after three months, when at first they were one of 300. So they know they're either going to be, either die or go home wounded. That's the only options. And uh, one of my students, uh, uh, Volodya Havraluk, he died. He was making a bandura. He was fighting for 10 years. He was a Cossack. He knew at some point it might happen, and outside of Bakhmut it did happen. Uh, or other folks like my neighbor. Uh, 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 the reason I actually had a possibility to fly to America is because he loaned me two thousand five hundred dollars. How can folks fighting Ukraine have so much money if they're living in the village? 
because of your tax dollars, <laughs> that's why. And I said, Victor, can you loan me $2,500? I don't have any money. My money ran out from, you know, from what we do going to the front, lots of gas usually. Uh, and he said, yes, Yuri, but you don't have to pay me back. Just buy me a drone. <laughs> I said, Victor, I will find you several drones for you and your friends. Uh, and that's why we have a fundraiser today. The funds are not the main part of, part of what I do. It's kind of like a side project. But I, last time I was on the Donetsk front, uh, he said, listen, Yurko, we have a gun. It's called a Minimet. It's like a short-range artillery uh, weapon. Uh, but it's, it was made by the Soviets in 1975. That's the one thing we have. And we don't have walkie-talkies. Can you buy us walkie-talkies? I said, listen, boys, the next tour, I will collect money for the military, uh, and I will you know, uh, distribute that personally, and, 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 and I will ask them exactly what they need and find it either in America, where it's cheaper, or in Ukraine. Uh, uh, so uh, this is a song, a cant to uh, Mary, the mother of God. Uh, one of the, the, uh, and we have some interesting poetry. It compares her to a flower, right? A very, you know, uh, a very fragrant flower. Uh, and uh, some, the, the, the second, the, the, the second half of the cant, uh, asking her uh, to look down on us, have pity on us from, from her, uh, you know, uh, uh, heavenly throne, stand with us in defense, uh, and uh, to give us a promise uh, that you won't uh, forsake us. Uh, and this is a sing-along. So if you know Ukraine, or if you don't, it's very simple. Uh, I will sing, you know, the, the verse, first verse. Rozeshlichna ya diva, chista ya, dachne paknucha ya. In your part, in polyphonic Bahata Volosya, right, you can divide into parts, uh, will be, uh, Po dai nam ruku, ne dai nam muku, matko milo serna. Now it's a lot to ask, I know, uh, but you can do it, and especially you folks who know Ukrainian. Let's try it together. Po dai nam ruku, ne dai nam muku, matko milo serna. Po dai nam ruku, ne dai nam muku, matko milo serna. And what are we singing? Uh, Mary, give us a hand. Don't let us suffer. Uh, you are our mother uh, of compassion and mercy. Uh, so let's give it a try. It sounded good. It sounded good. Rozeshlichnaya diva chistaya tachne paknuchaya. Po dai nam ruku, ne dai nam muku, matko milo sernaya. Po dai nam ruku, ne dai nam muku, matko milo serna. Bila lelia, diva Maria, shlichne paknuchaya.
Nam z nebesnych oblaków Wyzwól nas i znewoli Podaj nam ruku, nie daj nam muku Matko milosegna Ostani z nami ze swoimi słuchami Caryca nebesna ja Podaj nam ruku, nie daj nam muku Matko żmilosegna Daruj nas pokojem, a pokrom Twoim, wiernych na słów swoich. Podaj nam ruku, nie daj nam muku, Matko milosierna. Podaj nam obi, przyjmij nas w sobie, Matko milosierna. Podaj nam ruku, nie daj nam muku, Matko milosierna, ja. Podaj nam ruku, nie daj nam muku, Matko milosierna. Amen. Dziękuję i brawo, brawo wam. Dziękuję. So interesting Baroque cons of the Baroque era. You might say they may have, this culture would have come from Western Europe, but maybe it came from, Europe, from Ukraine as well, uh, where we had our own Kozak Baroque culture, uh, and we're very much a, a part of, of uh, the general European uh, culture. Really the center, around I think 1620, Kiev was the largest city in Europe. Uh, that's when people didn't flee uh, from Ukraine to America, because there was no America. That's when people fled from Europe uh, to free the free country we didn't have to pay taxes, <laughs> and you didn't have conscription, uh, and you had, you had a voice. So uh, the last song that I'll play, maybe the last, uh, is this storytelling. Uh, uh, we have an interesting storyteller who came by. Uh, so this is the Ukrainian uh, a specific genre of storytelling, which we call the epic songs. Uh, and another proto Kobzar would have been Homer, and I make the joke, I'm not talking about Homer Simpson, uh, but the Greek uh, classical uh, Kobzar. He was blind. Uh, he sang epic works. That makes him a Kobzar, right? Uh, well, uh, something like that. But interesting that even uh, poems like uh, the uh, Odyssey would have been sung too. And maybe to the accompaniment of an Apollonian harp made out of a tortoise uh, and with strings of the poor tor tortoise's uh, sinews or tendons. Uh, now, the traditional banduras actually had gut strings, right? So very, very similar technology. The only material you could find in the village before we had metal strings. So this is what we call a Ukrainian epic or uh, simply Duma. Uh, and this is a very short Duma. You can imagine, you know, the Odyssey would have been ours, right? And I do have, uh, my longest Duma I, I do is an hour and a half. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so if you want that, there's a disc with the Dumas you can listen to. The one that's an hour and a half. Is it an hour and a half? No, it's half an hour, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the longest one we have is about an hour and a half, a pro Samilo Kishko, about a, a Kozak freedom fighter. So this is uh, a song specifically, again, for defense, a song specifically uh, about uh, what's happening in Ukraine today. Uh, uh, it's a, a specifically a Paschalna Duma. It's an Easter theme Duma. And uh, the word Pascha in Ukraine, I ask, I ask Ukrainians, do you know what that means? They say, yes, it means resurrection, right? It's when Christ died on the cross and was resurrected. And the answer is no. Uh, the word Pascha or Easter in Ukrainian means vizvolenya, right? To become free as Jesus became free of his body and became, uh, his spirit was resurrected. Not just his spirit, actually his physical body uh, for a time when he uh, appeared to the apostles. Uh, but the idea... Uh, of uh, Easter, I guess in the Jewish language, which would have been Passover, that was the first use of, of Pascha. Is Easter the same tradition as Pascha? It's also a question. But uh, that's what was uh, the Passover all about. It was about uh, becoming free. Uh, and as Moses said, let my people go, right, uh, here on earth, let them go home, uh, the same situation we have in Ukraine. Uh, of course, when you die and, and, and hopefully go to heaven, that's, uh, that's uh, the next phase uh, of the Kozak experience, but the present phase. 
is to uh, get rid of Putin and to create a paradise on earth, a free country we call Ukraine. Uh, you might call this Duma very, something similar uh, to a Zionist movement, right? When the Jewish people said, it's time to go home. And people said, go home? What are you kidding? We live in this fantastic uh, super country called Egypt. You know, we're building these fantastic skyscrapers. We're very modern, uh, you know. Uh, of course, they kill us every now and then because we're very, uh, very a fruitful nation. <laughs> but, you know, it's not so bad. And you're asking us, Mr. Moses, to go back to that desert? Are you kidding me? Uh, you got to be crazy. And so do a lot of Ukrainians say, you got to be crazy. Go back to Ukraine during war. Uh, but I will propose to you the same Ukrainian Zionist movement, right? When we go home, not just to, to volunteer, as a lot of friends uh, this, this time in America, like, like Emily Marie and some other folks, uh, but the idea to repatriate, right? Actually, I've done it, right? It can happen. Uh, any Ukrainians considering on going home? Mikhailo, you're not too old. You know, you can make the trip back. <laughs> uh, and really... You might say, going, you know, what are you kidding, going back to Ukraine? Uh, that's the third world. Well, that's not what we say. Uh, and especially you can see how our Ukraine is very dynamically developing by leaps and bounds, especially during the revolutions. And what we're having now is what we call the third revolution. Maidan Krapka, Tri Krapka Nul, right? Not just the Maidan in Kiev, but all of Ukraine. And the developmental process is very significant. Uh, we're very much uh, creating a, a, un a union, union in Ukraine between East and West. Uh, we're, uh, you know, our values are getting uh, in order, right? Uh, the ideas of defending your country, uh, risking your life for your brethren. These are spiritual. There's no greater gift, as Jesus said. And we have lots of those cases in Ukraine. Uh, so this is spiritual development, uh, which we've been waiting for. Uh, and this Duma is... Uh, basically, I'll tell you what I'm singing about, but it's the same idea. You have 750 Cossacks. They're in a dungeon in Turkey, right? Uh, and uh, they don't have a window. They don't even know how long they've been there, but they've been there for 30 years, rotting, right? They're in chains. Uh, and the Duma is, is basically the conversation between the Cossacks and another Ukrainian who's in that palace, but she's not in the dungeon. She's on top of the Persian rugs. Uh, she's one of the uh, concubines, right? The sex slaves. Uh, she was Ukrainian, probably captured in a, a, a raid, taken back and sold, sold into slavery. And she comes down the stairs uh, and gives the Cossacks a very simple question. Uh, she says, do you know what day today is? And of course, the Cossacks have no idea. So they say, you know, how can we know? We've been here for 30 years, but we don't know we've been here for 30 years because we don't have a, a, any sunlight, you know, to see the sun, how many times it comes and goes. But... Uh, she says, I know you don't know. For your information, uh, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. And you might say, big deal, right? Well, for the Cossacks, it's a big deal. Because when you're celebrating the resurrection, and the Cossacks would like to resurrect Ukraine, but they can't because they're in shackles, they don't want to hear about Easter. For them, they're losing the battle in that dungeon. So they start you know, rattling their chains and, and calling... Uh, Marus is some very bad lewd names because they think that she's making fun of them. But she says, I'm not making fun of you. Uh, yes, I'm on the upper floors on the Persian rugs while you're down here, but uh, I want uh, to, to save you. Right, so she says once the, uh, the sultan goes uh, to the mosque, she will steal the key and let them out and free them and let her people go. And so they very, very well do this, but the plot twist in the story is when uh, the Cossacks think that she's going with them. And they ask, you know, are you coming home? She says, no. Tell my parents, if, if you pass through my village of Bohoslav in the Cherkasky region, or Kiev region, uh, uh, tell them not to raise a ransom. Uh, tell my parents, uh, and her father's a priest actually, uh, tell them not to raise a ransom that I'm not coming home. Uh, that it's too late, uh, that I'm happy living uh, abroad. Uh, I've become, uh, how do I say? Uh, well, uh, she says it's not going to happen, right? It's nice 
uh, to have very luxurious things uh, and things which we have uh, often, even in the diaspora. I don't give people a guilt trip. I try not to. And I like to th thank people in the diaspora, especially the Ukrainian diaspora, uh, who have helped many refugees. And I tell Ukrainians in Ukraine who've never been out of the country, I say, get out, but come back home, <laughs> right? Uh, get an education, make some money, get some capital, uh, and then come back to Ukraine and help us make a fantastic nation. That's what I do. Uh, you don't have to make a lot of money uh, to be happy. Uh, sometimes the money uh, can work against you uh, if you have too much. Uh, so, Duma uh, Promorusa Boslavka, and every Duma ends with a prayer, this one, uh, to free us from uh, the many centuries of Muscovite slavery, uh, and finally, set Ukraine free. Ko 
And I know that's a lot of material, uh, but just one last song. It's not a long song, and something again uh, we can sing, and actually uh, much simpler, actually, than the Ukrainian song. This is a song I learned in, in America, uh, in Raleigh, in school, uh, Catholic school, where you can talk about God and speak about spirituality. Uh, and uh, something uh, that we've been singing again you know, this past year on the front and in the refugees, in the bomb shelters and refugee centers. Uh, and uh, uh, interesting that it's uh, also uh, a, a, a hymn to, uh, to Mary, uh, but an all-European hymn. The original was in Latin. Uh, this is from a German manuscript uh, from about 1830 uh, called Save Regina. Uh, this is a very old, uh, maybe even from the Middle Ages, the original tunes, uh, but they would have upgrades you know, every, every uh, period. Uh, so this is this is something closer to the uh, uh, a little bit baroque, a little bit still still old music, but something later. Uh, and uh, I will sing the first half in English, the, the second half in Latin. Uh, we will sing the chorus in Ukrainian, but it's very simple. It's actually two words. Uh, so I will sing. This is my part. Hail, holy queen, enthroned above. In your part, very simple. Oh, Maria. It's only four notes and two words. Let's try it. Oh, Maria. You had a question? Did somebody say? Okay. Okay. So, very, very, then I'll sing an, an, another one. Uh, uh, Hail, Mother of mercy and of love. Oh, Maria. Then I'll sing. Uh, 
triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn. And we'll sing this chorus in Ukrainian. Slava, slava, slava korolevi. Similar, similar to Slava, slava Ukraina, uh, the, the kind of our motto, uh, glory to Ukraine. The answer is glory to the heroes, right? To them, uh, people who've really made sacrifice. Uh, it's not some kind of, you know, uh, self-confidence or... It's really uh, let the heroes take the glory. But we're singing Slava Koroleva, so glory to the queen, right? Uh, let's try it all. Let's do it. Slava, Slava, Slava Korolevi. Bravo, fantastic. Let's give it a try. Uh, and the last uh, chorus at the very end, after all the verses, we'll sing a Slava Ukraini. Uh, so it's very fitting. We'll give it a try. Hail, Holy Queen and throne above, O Maria. Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph, Holy Cherubim, sing with us, ye Seraphim. Heaven and earth resound the hymn. Slava, Slava, Slava Korolevi, our life, our sweetness here below. Oh, Maria, our hope in sorrow and in woe. Oh, Maria, triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn. Slava, Slava, Slava Korolevi, and when their last breaths leave them, O oh Maria, show them thy Son Christ Jesus. O oh Maria, triumph all ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn. Slava, Slava, Slava Korolevi, salve Regina Quelitum. Sors unicata regenum. Jubilate cherubim, exultate seraphim, consonate perpetim. Mater misericordiae, dulcis parens clementiae. Jubilate cherubim, exultate seraphim, consonate perpetim. Slava, slava, slava korolevi, slava, slava, slava Ukraini. Heroim slava.